The movie begins with a visual of a young man named George hiding stacks of dynamite inside a wall, struggling to pull up his weight with the flashlight held tightly between his teeth. Grunting, he meticulously set up the mechanism with his hands bloody and shaking, then calibrates it precisely, pushing himself up from the ground with sweat trickling down his face. The man closes up the space with a wooden board and massages his painful knee. Taking one last look at this handiwork, the man breathes an anxious breath and hurries out of the building. The scene changes and we are taken to Munich on November 8, 1939, where hundreds of Nazi soldiers are gathered together to hear their leader, Hitler, give a speech. Meanwhile, out in the city, George is attempting to cross the wired border in hopes of escaping before his plot is discovered. Just as he arrives at his destination and pulls out the wire cutter, George is stopped by the stern voice of the guards patrolling the area. Looking back with fear in his eyes, he tells the guards that he was only looking for an old friend who was part of a folklore society that he too was a part of. Finding his claim suspicious, George is taken to the police station where he is thoroughly searched by the captain whose doubts about Georg increase when he finds a small badge of an Ilgiel party. Hoping to find out more about the man, the officers place George into custody. Sitting inside the cold cell alone, George checks his watch for the timer of the bomb he had set up. A few minutes later, the city shakes with a loud explosion. The city becomes engulfed in chaos as the news that an attempt was made on their leader's life reaches the ears of every soldier and government official. The following morning, a group of Nazi soldiers make their way to Murtenberg and speak to the local party leader, Eberly, asking him to point them to Garag's relatives. Although Eberly tries to tell the captain that they are innocent people, the captain insists that they be brought out for questioning. Once everyone is gathered, Eberly explains who they are, including George's ex fiance Elsa. Once everyone is accounted for, George's relatives are gathered and taken to Berlin for questioning. Once they had gathered as much information on George as possible, the head of criminal police, Neba, had the suspicious man brought to a private room for questioning. Looking at him intently, the inspectors informed George that his assassination attempt had killed seven men and a woman, but failed to kill Hitler. As the inspectors noticed the evident disappointment on his face, they immediately started interrogating George regarding his alleged assassination plot. However, he remained silent, choosing instead to hum a nostalgic tune from his past. This melody transported him back in time, triggering a vivid flashback of treasured memories. In that moment, we witnessed George spending joyful moments with his friends years ago, engaging in activities like dancing and swimming in the sea. A few days later, George receives a disappointing letter from his drunkard father that he had sold two more of their best land and is forced to return home. When he finally arrives, George is greeted warmly by his mother, who disappointedly tells him that his father was inside the house, passed out drunk. Going inside, George witnesses the repulsive sight of his father unconscious on the couch and becomes disgusted. The following morning, George George wakes up early to help his father with chopping up some wood and is disappointed when he witnesses his father is already drunk. While remembering the argument he had had with his father, George is pulled back to reality when Inspector Heinrich slaps him hard on the face. His face bloody, George is dragged back to his feet by other officers and strapped down on a spring bed prepared for torture. Still unwilling to say anything, George begins to experience torture and screams in agony as he is whipped repeatedly. When the first round of torture is unable to break the suspect, George is subjected to several other horrifying acts, but remains resolute in keeping quiet. After throwing him into a cell, Neba and Heinrich go into their office to discuss the man's faith. Informing Neba that Hitler wants a signed confession from George, Heinrich threatens to pull out all of the suspect's teeth to break his resolve. Taking a different approach, Neba decides to get a confession from George using gentler means. Calling him into the inspection room once more, Neba offers George a glass of water and brings in someone from George's past. As soon as George looks at the person who walks in, we are transported to another flashback. George is playing an instrument at a party with his friends and notices a beautiful married woman, Elsa, walk in, accompanied by her drunk husband. After George and Elsa share a sensual dance, the two realize the electric attraction between each other and are unable to keep their distance from one another. When a brawl erupts in the bar between two contradictory party supporters, George follows Elsa outside after she is pushed away by her husband and the two share a quick but sensual kiss. Fearing she would be seen, Elsa walks away just as George's friends come out of the bar and accuse him of being a pacifist who wouldn't take a stand with them. Returning to the present, George watches Elsa with wide eyes as his captures drag her into the room. Seeing that their point has been made, they threaten Elsa's life unless George confesses everything. Hoping to protect Elsa, George begins to confess to his crime, telling the inspectors that he had acted alone. Seeing that he has become more communicative, Neba pulls out the red front badge they had confiscated 
obligated from him and begins to ask him about it. George begins his story by telling them that although he had the badge, he was never a member of the Communist Party, explaining that he joined it only for companionship. After deliberation amongst other inspectors, Neba and Heinrich are forced to disregard George's claims of acting alone. Bringing him into the inspection room once again, they accuse him of being a liar, asking him to give up his culprits as he would not have been able to build such a powerful bomb alone. Caving, George tells them that he had received a call from Churchill, who had asked him to build the bomb for him. Assuming that he was joking, the inspectors attempt to torture him, but George screams out that he can prove his claim if they only provide him with a pen and paper. As he draws his proof on a piece of paper while blood drips from his nose, George is transported to another memory. One evening while drinking with his friends, he overhears Elsa's husband talking about how he had taught his wife a lesson and hurries to her house. Seeing her bruised and battered, George feels sorry for her, and the two spend a passionate time together. As the days pass, George becomes infatuated with Elsa and begins to dream about a life with her. One afternoon, on his way home, he witnesses one of his friends being arrested and is forced to keep quiet about the incident, making him fearful of what is to come. In 1934, during the Harvest Festival, George and his family head to church and accidentally see his friend, along with other party members who were being transported to an undisclosed location. When they arrive in town, they see that the whole community is celebrating the new regime with lavish food and decide to return home as they don't want to be a part of it. While lost in thought in his small cell, George gets a visit from Neba, who had brought him breakfast and some water. Sitting next to him, Neba begins to question George about the details of the constructed bomb. George explains that he had stolen the equipment from his workplace and the quarry. Although Neba still harbors suspicions that the act was committed alone, George continues to assure him. After he is left alone in his small cell, George feels the exhaustion due to the bright light in the room. He begins to reminisce about the time he spent with Elsa back in his small town and how they had made plans to live together. To allow them to spend more time together, George rents the basement of Elsa and her husband's house, pretending he is not aware of Elsa. One afternoon, while walking around town, he notices his friend's girlfriend sitting in the town square with a vial sign around her neck for her association with a Red Party member. This incident makes George realize that things are getting much worse. A few days later, George gets a surprising visit from his friend who had escaped from the concentration camp. While hurriedly eating the food that they had offered him, the gaunt-looking man tells them where he had been and how the Nazi was making them suffer. Once the man is well-fed, George hands him a large loaf of bread and sends him on his way. Due to the lack of work, George gets a job in the steel mill where he reunites with his inmate Efrain, Joseph, who was now foreset into laboring. Curious as to where their country is heeding, George attends a viewing of Hitler's speech to his people and realizes that the country is headed to war. Going to work the following day, George informs Joseph of what he has found. George tells his friend of his plot to detonate the bomb, hoping to stop the madness in its tracks. Although Joseph has his doubts about their ability to do anything, George has already made up his mind. One morning, while working on a crib for Elsa's unborn baby, Elsa walks in after noticing his sour mood, and the two begin to kiss. Elsa's husband, who had noticed the act from the window, rushes inside and begins to attack Elsa. Angry at the constant abuse, George pulls a knife and threatens Elsa's husband, forcing him to flee. Picking her up from the floor, he consoles her, telling her that they need to leave. He explained that he was working now, and if he repaired furniture on the side, they would have money to spare. He tells her that there were cheap flats on Haydenheim, but she explains that those were only available for labor front workers. While working in the steel mill the following day, George is angry at the new regime and the suffering it is causing all his loved ones. Seeing that Hitler was going to be giving a speech at a large hall soon, George began to study the layout of the hall by visiting repeatedly. One night, after the hall is cleared out and closed for the night, George sneaks in and inspects the area where he wants to hide the bomb. In the present, George is in another questioning session with Neba and Heinrich, who are surprised how a talented worksman would be involved in such acts. Adamon, in his beliefs, tells them that Hitler is bad for their country and that the people would suffer for his actions. After hearing the last of what he has to say, Neba dictates the transcriber to write down George's confession. Although George spoken the truth, the commander ordered Neba to inflict torture and any means necessary to get George to give up his culprits. Although Neba believes George is telling the truth, he accepts the order. Dragging George to a secret room, Neba implores doctors to use medication to force George to talk. While under the influence of the drugs, George remembers how he and Elsa's son had died, imploring him to execute his plan. One morning, George packs his items and leaves the attic he had been staying in above Elsa's mother's house. Following him, she asks why he was abandoning them to go to Munich and makes it clear that she has given up on him. After being subjected to several more torture and medically induced hallucinations, the captain is finally forced to believe George is telling the truth about
about his act to assassinate Hitler. Five years later, we see Neba being dragged to a private room where he is accused of being part of another assassination attempt to take down Hitler. After his crimes were read, Neba was put to death by hanging. In a concentration camp where he had been held for the past five years, George hears the news about Neba's death. After receiving the news, George realizes that he will be executed soon and awaits his time to come. A few days later, George hears the news that the British have bombed Germany severely, bringing Hitler's reign to a quick end. That night, George is called for interrogation and executed to keep his courageous act a secret. A few days later, on April 29, 1945, the Dachau concentration camp, the same one where George was being held, was liberated. It took Germany decades to recognize George as a resistance fighter. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.